Hello and welcome to another Simplified Astro video and today we're going to be looking at the Sequence Generator Pro Autofocus in Module and now this is a brilliant piece of um, software and it really really makes focusing so much easier and very very accurate um, I use it all the time, I use it on various focuses um, I've got a couple of lake sides I use it on Moonlight, uh, Pegasus, Sesto Senso and it works great on all of them. They all have ASCOM drivers, so provided you've got that, um, I haven't found a focuser yet that it doesn't work on. Now, the video will be slightly longer than normal, and the reason being the autofocus is really split into two parts. Uh, firstly, it's setting up the focus module itself, so the step size and so on and then running the autofocus routine. So the first thing that we need to do is repeat what I've said in previous videos, which is when you're making setting changes which are permanent, always do it through the Equipment Profile Manager. Never do it through the Control Panel, because the Control Panel isn't permanent unless you save that then as a profile. So for this video, we're going to go to Equipment Profile Manager and we're going to select the profile that we've got our focuser set up in. Um, I'm assuming for this that you've already got a focuser motor and you've put it on. Um, whilst I'm using a lakeside, I'm actually using the Pegasus um, hub driver. So that's why this shows as Pegasus. Now there's something on here uh, that we just need to have a quick look at and that is the temperature compensate. Now this isn't uh, an autofocus with temperature change. What this does is this will refocus the focuser per degree of temperature change. So it, it will make a change of a set amount of steps per degree of temperature change. Now this takes quite a bit to set up. Um, it's different to autofocus. Uh, this this is basically a permanent change of focus whilst the temperature changes. Until you're happy that you can um, set this up, then I would say leave it for the time being. And, and it's really not that accurate. I have tried it previously, um, but it's a, a devil to set up, and it's not it's not that accurate. So I would say leave that. Um, for our purposes, we need to check the use autofocus tick box and then we need to click on set now the settings in this side of the the box we're going to ignore for the time being we will look at those later on but for the time being we just want to make sure that we've got the autofocus metric set there's two options here You've got the HFR, which we're going to use, and uh, the guys at Main Sequence say that this really is taking over from uh, the FWHM, and it's just a bit more robust. Or you, you have H, um, FWHM if you prefer to use that, but you will need Pinpoint to use it. Um, I do have Pinpoint. I have tried it, and I didn't see any difference at all. So um, for me, the R-Flux radius works absolutely perfectly. Now the other thing that we need to check before we go anywhere is that if you're using an electronic filter wheel you need to make sure that the autofocus exposures are set because the autofocus uses this information for the exposure value uh, for each filter. Six seconds for your uh, standard broadband filters is normally okay depending on your camera of course. Uh, you'll see my 3 nanometer um, HA filter needs a bit more and the other narrowband filters a bit more. But spend a bit of time to make sure that you get these figures right because uh, the autofocus routine does use those. Um, the binning of 2x2 two two, and you'll see for the loom filter we have a 6 second uh, autofocus exposure. Now that will need to be duplicated in your frame and focus figures here. Uh, that's important for the autofocus setup routine to work. The autofocus data points, the default is 9, 
um, you can leave that as it is for now um, just to um, go over the the binning there just leave uh, as two by two unless you really need to change it if there's a specific reason that you need to change that to one by one or three by three and then leave it as uh, the default two by two and the just to uh, run over this the one shot color um, exposure obviously you're not going to use the filters there so you can just set the one shot color exposure right in there um, the autofocus data points default is nine leave it at nine for the time being we may need to change that later on depending uh, whether you get a nice v curve or not but for the time being um, you can leave that as default nine for most um, instances that will work fine the step size we will go over in a second on on how to set that up that's a calculation that we need to run through the autofocus close delay that's just how long it takes the box to close once the autofocus routine has changed i think the default is 30 i can't remember but um 10 seconds is long enough and the min minimum star diameter at one by one pixels uh, one by one binning sorry per pixel um, this is the minimum pixel size for a star to be seen as a star um, you need to keep this fairly low so that you're picking up enough stars so that we've got a nice even field as we see here but not so low that you're picking up noise and uh, perhaps bad pixels and so on um, if it's too high and then you you're going to start picking up galaxies and and other stuff that you don't want so just keep that value reasonably low i mean six i believe is the default and that is divided by the binning so the six pixels there is actually um, three pixels because it's halved by the two by two binning so that's more than enough uh, to get a nice even star field there but you if you're finding that you're not getting enough stars then um, you can play around with that figure everything else in here we will leave as it is um, the autofocus filter with loom the temptation is to use that but only use that if you know your filters are absolutely par focal um, you can do it if you've set all your filter offsets which is uh, I, I can run through that in a different video but um, for the time being unless you know your filters are absolutely par focal or all your filter offsets are set then just leave that unchecked so we will focus with the filter that we're using so now the next thing we need to do is to calculate what this step size is so we'll close these down we'll save that information there now to do this we need to be somewhere near focused to start so you will need a button off mask or uh, you can look at the hfr value there and get that as low as you can but so long as you're somewhere near focus to start um, then we can run through the the process of um, getting the step size now there's two values that you need to make a note of the half flux radius value of the initial almost in focus um, frame which here is 0 0.98 and also your current autofocus motor position uh, these two values are quite important because the HFR value um, to get the position that we need we're going to be looking at somewhere between three and five times this value and also the focus position this value will be deducted from the finishing position uh, that will become clear when I run through the, the process so what we're going to do now is we're going to start off cycling subs and whilst that's happening whilst the six second subs are cycling we're going to monitor the half flux radius value now remember i said we want a value of, on this of somewhere between three and five times the starting value so what we're going to do now is we're going to back our focuser out incrementally so uh, I'm going to go out 100 steps at a time. You, you know, you may want to start at 10 steps or 20 steps, um, but I know that uh, I can come out 100 steps. So I'm going to move my focus around 100 steps, and I'm going to see what the 
HFR value comes out at. Uh, so I want somewhere between 3 and 5 um, because it was 3 times and 5 times the starting value which was 0 0.9 so somewhere between 3 and 5 uh, will be a perfect value. So I'm going to come out another 100 steps. And then again have a look at this value. And we're 5.4 so that's um, maybe a little bit high so I'm going to run it in 20 steps maybe I'll run in another 10 steps so I'm going to move this down to 10 and I'm going to run in another 10 steps And there we go. So I'm, I'm between three and five, 4.7. So that's a pretty good value. So you take this value now, this 17715, and from that you deduct your original starting value. And that will give you the number of steps that you've moved to achieve this HFR value, which is between three and five times your original starting value. So in this instance, I've moved 170 steps. Now the calculation for getting your step size is that you multiply multiply that value by 2 and then you divide that by the number of focus points in your original setup which in this instance was 9 minus 1. So that's going to be 8. So you've got the 170 steps times 2, 340, divide that by 8. And for me, I think that came out at 42.5, which gave me 43 steps. So if we now look in my focus information, we see here I've got 43 steps. So that is how you make your calculation for your number of steps. So once we've got our step size now, we can stop or well, the number of steps we can stop the um, the subs and we can now open up our equipment profile manager for the profile that we're going to be using we open our focus module under the auto use auto focus section we now input the step size that we've just calculated in this box here um, as we just worked out with mine, that worked out 42.5. I've rounded that up to 43. Input that there. Click OK. Save your profile. And then click OK. And at this point now, you want to click on File. And then Apply Profile to Sequence. And then apply the profile that you've just saved the settings to. And that now will... Um, for our current sequence now we can have a look in here and we'll see we've got the, the 43 steps in there so now what I'll do is I'll send my focuser back to its original starting position which was 17545 click OK and if we want we can just take another single sub and we should have the HFR value back down around the, the 1 mark. And there we are, 0.8. So we're, we're back down exactly where we were originally. So what we can do now is um, we're all now set up to run autofocus. The idea now is let's have a little run. Just click on run and this should now give us a nice V curve. Um, it doesn't need to be precisely V curve, but the way that the SGP algorithm works for autofocus is it takes the mean of the bottom three points. So 
don't be surprised if you see a really low point and think, oh, I should be down at 0.6 HFR, but it actually comes in slightly higher than that because it's it takes the, the average of the bottom three points. So it's not um, it's not just the lowest point that you see. Uh, with the settings that we've got here, I think I should have a, a reasonably good V curve. Um, but if you don't, then you can just play around with the settings. You can adjust your step size slightly up and down. You may need to just change the uh, the number of points. Uh, where we're at nine points, you may need to go to seven points. But um, the nine, nine points and a calculated step size on all the focuses that I've used so far um, have been spot on. I haven't had to change anything. So you can see here we've got a reasonably good V curve um, coming along. And it should now go out of focus the other direction and start moving back up out of focus, which it has, which is perfect. And we'll just let this run its course. Now it's worth noting as well that um, you may want to think and give some thought as to um, how often you're going to autofocus. Remembering of course that when you saw my um, hydrogen alpha filter sub value, the exposure length, it was 25 seconds. So the autofocus routine, you know, this one takes a minute, minute and a half or so um, for the narrowband filters it's going to take much longer so you need to give some consideration as to how often you're going to refocus so when this is um, finished doing its thing and there you are it, it's finished now it gives us uh, an auto a focus value or an HFR value of 0.88 and that's complete so we can close the box down the the little timeout box uh, that will come up here during the actual routine, uh, because I've done this manually, it doesn't come up. But when it runs automatically, uh, the timeout will come, the 10 second time up there, and then the box will close and then you'll carry on with the routine. But I'll, I'll run through that a bit later. So we can close that box out. Uh, we can actually turn off the image statistics and you'll see we've actually um, got a reasonably good focus so if we let's just zoom into one corner here have a look yeah we're pretty good you know for a single two by two bind eight second or six seconds sub that's a, a pretty good focus so what we'll do now is we will open up our equipment profile manager again because again any settings that we're making now will be permanent We'll click on our profile that we're going to be using and we'll look at our focus module again and we're going to go into set. Now this little section of options here are the ones that we're now going to have a look at. So we can auto focus per frame or per number of frames. Um, I'm not really sure what the purpose of this is because if you're in focus and nothing has changed, be that the temperature or time or whatever, I, I don't really see why you would focus with every frame. It's there as an option, so if you want to choose that, you can focus with that. I use this autofocus every one degree of temperature change. This varies depending what telescope and what focus I'm using. Uh, some are more susceptible to temperature change than others. For example, my uh, Takahashi FSQ106 is quite susceptible to temperature change. So that's on every half a degree of temperature change. I'll refocus. Um, on my little uh, TS80 and my Esprit, not quite so much. So um, this is on my Esprit here. So this uh, I only refocus with every one degree. You can also change or refocus based on time again I'm not really sure why you would do this on time um, perhaps you've got a cray for focus so that over time may slip so you just want to make sure that you're getting back in focus so you know the temperature may not have moved but the focus may have slipped so I guess this 
is more for people with Crayford style focuses. And I also auto focus on filter change. Uh, this is important for me because whilst I do have um, allegedly par focal um, filters, I have checked them and they're not. They're, they are slightly out, slightly different, particularly the blue filter. Uh, so I do auto focus after every filter change. It doesn't take long, so it's worth doing it. You can auto change, uh, auto focus before the filter starts and not on resume uh, before the sequence starts. Sorry. I used to do this, but then I found that it was uh, becoming a bit of a pain if I had actually focused first and then as soon as my sequence started, it would focus again. I tend to focus first when I'm setting up my targets and um, looking, setting up my sequence. I tend to focus anyway, so I, I've stopped doing that. Um, you can also focus on resume and after automatic centering. So if you've done a, um, a meridian flip and you've centered, you may want to refocus then uh, just in case. I guess that's more for people with uh, schmidt grains where you, you may have a bit of mirror flop um, from one side of the meridian to the other. So this autofocus after century may be uh, worthwhile to you if you've got a Schmidt-Cassel grain. But those are really all the settings that you need to know. Once you've got those settings again, click OK, save your profile, and you're you're ready to go with the autofocus. I think what I'll do is I'll finish this video here and then I'll do another video, uh, just a short one part two, which will follow up to this and show the what we've done here, setting up the autofocuser, actually running uh, in real time on my setup. So hopefully this has been a useful video and I will see you soon. Bye.